video 2.2 market segmenting. So when you're trying to reach customers with a marketing message or an ad campaign, you have to target the right market with the right message. If you aim too broadly, your message might reach a few people who end up being customers, but you'll also reach a lot of people who aren't interested in your products or services. When your messaging isn't optimized for your audience, you'll end up with a lot of wasted advertising dollars. So market segmentation can help you to target just the people most likely to become satisfied customers of your company or enthusiastic consumers of your content. To segment a market, you split it up into groups that have similar characteristics. You can base a segment on one or more qualities, splitting up an audience in this way can allow you to precisely market tar target your market and personalize your content for them. So market segmentation can help you define and better understand your target audiences and ideal customers. If you're a marketer, this allows you to identify the right market for your products and then target your market marketing more effectively. Similarly, publishers can use market segmentation to offer more precisely targeted advertising options and to customize your content for different audience groups. Say, for example, you're a marketer who's advertising a new brand of dog food. You could split an audience into segments based on whether they have a dog. You could then segment that audience further based on what kind of dog they have and then show them ads for the food formulated for their dog's breed. A publisher could use the same information to show content about dogs to people who have or like dogs. Marketing segmentation allows you to target your content to the right people in the right way, rather than targeting your entire audience with a generic message. This helps you to increase the chances of people engaging with your ad or content and will result in more efficient campaigns and improved return on investment. So there are many different types of market segments that you can create. Deg demographic segmentation, behavioral segmentation, geographic segmentation, and psychographic segmentation. So demographic segmentation is age, sex, marital status, family size, occupation, education level, income, race, and nationality, and religion. We talked about that in the previous set in the previous video. So demographic segmentation is one of the most common forms of market of target marketing. So you split up your audiences based on observable differences. These include things like age, sex, marital status, family size, occupation, education level, income, race, nationality, and religion. Segmenting a market according to demographics is the most basic form of segmentation. Combining demographic segmentation with other types can help you to narrow down your market even more. One of benefit of this kind of segmentation is that the information is relatively easy, accessible, and low cost to obtain. Some products are targeted explicitly towards a specific demographic. One personal care company, for example, might make two deodorant products, one labeled as men's and one labeled as women's. Automotive companies might segment their audience by income and market with different makes and models of each car of cars to each segment. One company may have a luxury brand, an economy brand, and a mid-range brand. There are numerous ways to gather demographic data. One of the ways is to ask your customers directly. This can get time consuming, but getting the information directly from your customers will help to ensure that it's accuracy. If you go this route, be respectful in how much you ask um, your customers. You don't want to impede on their personal lives. Um, you may also be able to obtain customer demographic data by looking at social media or other online profiles where they provide information about themselves. You can also get demographic information from second party and third party data providers, including marketing services and credit bureaus. Public records, such as those kept by the Census Bureau and the U.S. Postal Service, can also provide useful information. Behavioral segmentation. So you can segment your market based on consumers' behaviors, especially regarding your product. 
Divide your audience based on the behaviors they display will allow you to create messaging that caters to them. Some types of behaviors to look at include online shopping habits. If a customer's online shopping habits across all their sites correlate with the likelihood that they will make an online purchase on your website. Actions taken on our websites. Uh, you can track actions the users take on your online properties to better understand how they interact with them. You might look at how long someone stays on your site, whether they read articles all the way to the end or the types of content they click on and more. Benefits sought. This refers to the need that a customer is trying to meet by purchasing a product. Their usage rate. Somebody might be a heavy user of your products, a medium user of your products, or a lighter user of your products. They can also be a non-user of your product. And loyalty. After using a product for some time, customers often develop brand loyalty. You can categorize these customers based on how loyal they are to your brand and tailor your messaging accordingly. Behavioral data is useful because it relates directly to how somebody interacts with your brand and products. Because of this, it can help you market more effectively to them. Geographic segmentation. Um, splitting up your market based on your customer's location is a basic but highly useful segmentation strategy. A customer's location can help you better understand their needs and enable you to send out location-specific ads and also help to tailor where your diversification is going to come from. There are several kinds of geographic segmentation. The most basic is identifying a customer's location based on their country, state, county, zip code, um, you could also identify consumers based on the characteristics of the area that they live in. Uh, this could include the climate, the population, whether it's urban, suburban, or rural. Identifying characteristics can require you to get specific since one country, county could have rural, suburban, and urban areas. So dividing a market according to location is critical if you need to target an ad to people in a specific area. So if you're buying a billboard in a rural area, you don't want to cater that billboard ad to people that live in an urban area. Um, you may need to change the language of your messaging based on the region you're targeting. People that live in different countries may also have different interests. Baseball is popular in the United States, but cricket is more popular in India. So if you're marketing sports equipment or publishing sports articles, you'll want to take these different preferences into account. So customers can also consider different needs to different regions. A clothing comp company could show ads featuring warmer clothing to, to people that live in cooler climates and show the opposite to the people that live in the warmer climates. climates. Psychographic segmentation is very similar to demographic segmentation, but it de deals with characteristics that are more mental and emotional. Um, so understanding these aspects of your audience can help you to create content that appeals to them more effectively. If you find members of a demographic segment are responding differently to your content, you might want to add in some psychographic information. While demographics provide the basic facts about who your audience is, psychographics give you insight into why people decide to purchase or not to purchase your product. So let's say you're a home uh, decor company and you sell furniture and you have a marketing segment considered con consisting of newlyweds that are in their 20s and 30s with a household income above 60000 some members of this segment are converting, but while others are not. So when you add in the psychographic information to the mix, you may find that people purchase your products often value community, friendships, and they're environmentally conscious. Based on this information, you could show ads that show people entertaining friends in their homes and emphasize the environmentally friendly attributes of, of the brands of the products you sell. You can collect this data in many of the ways that you gather other demographic data. You can ask your customers for this information using surveys. You can look at the way people interact with your website and see what kind of content they engage with. And you can also supplement this data with second and third party data. There's other methods of market segmentation, including value segmentation, firmographic, firmographic segmentation, generational segmentation, that's one of my favorites, 
life stage, stage segmentation and seasonal segmentation. So value segmentation, some businesses will split up a market based on transactional worth of their customers, how much they're likely to spend on their products. So to determine a customer's transactional worth, you can look at previous purchase data, such as how many purchases they make, how often they make them, and the value of the items that they purchase and average that all out. From a graphic segmentation, um, this is more commonly used in business to business companies um, to divide up the businesses in a market. It's similar to demographic, but it's looking at the characteristics of a company rather than an individual. So they might look at industry revenue, number of employees and location. Generational segmentation. I love looking at studies that have looked at the different generations um, and how they purchase or how they donate and how they receive their information. So businesses can segment consumers by generation and group them into categories that include Gen Z, Millennials, Gen X, Baby Boomers, and the Silent Generation. Of course, not every member of a generation is the same, but general segmentation can give you some additional insight to your audience. Life stage segmentation. You can also segment your market into groups based on where they are in their lives. People are at different stages of life, need different things. For example, soon to be college students might need furniture, new parents might need baby food, people getting married um, might need furniture as well. So there's different things um, that go into this. And then the seasonal segmentation is similar to how people buy different products in different periods of their lives. Um, and they buy different things at different times of the year. Things that you buy at the end of the year for Christmas and Hanukkah are different than what you're buying in the spring for Easter. So when you decide to segment out your target market, it will improve your campaign performance, improve your product development. It will show you the areas that you need to expand and diversify. It will improve the focus on your business and will in kind of lead you in making your other business decisions. So market segmentation can help improve the performance of your marketing campaigns by helping you target the right people with the right messaging at the right time. Segmentation enables you to learn more about your audience so you can better tailor your messaging to their preferences and needs. Targeting a specific segment that is likely to be interested in your content or your product is more effective than targeting an overly broad audience. If you advertise to an entire market, you will end up spending a massive amount of money on ads, but a relatively small percentage will convert. If you instead direct your marketing to a segment with the right characteristics, you can increase the conversion rate of your campaign considerably. The more specific the audience of people interested in your brand, the more beneficial targeting can be. For example, there's no reason to market dental tools to anybody but dentists. Marketing them to a broad audience would result in wasted ad dollars. Even if you're selling a product that has broad appeal, customer segmentation can help you tailor your messaging to different groups to better engage with them. Say that you're advertising furniture. You might split up your audience by age and push individual ads that show people who are close to their age. Informing for informs on product development. So market segmentation can help you develop products that better meet the needs of your customers. You can create products that appeal to the needs of your main market segment but you may develop different products tailored to different parts of your customer base. Let's say you run an automotive company and your primary market segment is middle-class families. You would likely design your car with lots of seating, leg room, and space to accommodate a family that has multiple kits. But you would also create mid-range priced vehicles. You could, however, segment your audience further and create vehicles that appeal to each of those segments. For example, one might be families who like to outgo, go on outdoor vacations like camping, 
To appeal to, to this group, you might offer your vehicle with four-wheel drive and have lots of cargo space. Another segment might prefer to take trips into the city and you might make this car smaller so that drivers can easily navigate narrow city streets and fit into tight parking spots. So designing your products with the needs of your customers in mind will help you to sell more, make different products that will make your customers happy and make your customers feel like you understand their needs. So when you're segmenting your market, it reveals areas to expand. So if you segment and you notice that there's not a product that meets that segment, that opens up a way for you to diversify. So market segmentation can help businesses identify audience segments that they're not currently reaching with their marketing efforts and expand into new markets. When you look at your audience data, you might discover interests that you didn't realize your customers had. For example, a company might make the majority of their sales in physical stores. When looking at behavioral data, they might see that many of their customers like to shop online. So then you could either open an online store or push advertising um, towards your online marketplace more. Another example is a clothing company that primarily targets middle-aged women. They might decide to start selling kids clothing as, as well, since those women are buying clothing for their kids. They could then introduce these items and market them directly to their current customers. So improving your business focus with market segmentation can help you to refocus your efforts and enables you to establish your brand identity and specialize in a particular type of product, so narrowing down your niche. A brand that tries to appeal to everyone in their marketing will come off as generic and unmemorable, and it could leave customers confused about what the brand stands for and what kind of company it is. So on the flip side, you have a company that tries to sell everything, likely won't make an impact in any one market. And its offerings may be of lower quality compared to companies that specialize in higher quality goods. So as your company grows, you can expand your offerings, but when you start out, it can be really challenging to differentiate your company if your product offerings are too broad. When you segment, you can also help to inform um, key considerations on important business decisions regarding how you get your product to your customers. This could include pricing and distribution. Businesses can use segmentation to help them decide on pricing that maximizes sales while keeping customers happy. Companies may consider demographic information such as income levels. You might also take into account if your customers are sensitive to price and the degree that price affects their actual purchase. Um, market segmentation can also help you to determine optimal strategies for the distribution of your products. And some groups of people, for instance, are like more likely to shop online while others might come into your store. So you can decide which stores to um, carry which products based on who buys what and which, which products maybe to keep only for online. 